All right, welcome back to Brain Flow TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most. So, four teenage girls have been arrested and charged with murder in the mysterious Valentine's Day shooting death of Faith Burns. Let's talk about this. I'm looking at these teenage girls and I'm thinking these girls look like babies. Now, if I was one of them, I'm telling everything I know to avoid going to prison. Have y'all seen Orange is the New Black? I don't think that's any place for a female that is this young and this pretty to be. You understand what I'm saying? They don't even look like they can defend themselves. So I know they will be victims in there. Anyhow, let's talk about what really happened. So four teenagers in Georgia have been charged with connection with a murder investigation dating back to February. You know, that's around Valentine's Day when it all goes down. You buy your boo some flowers and take them out on a date, make love to them, all that other good stuff. It's about lovey-dovey time of the year. So, according to jail records, Kennedy Collins, who was 17 year old, and Jocelyn Spencer, who was 17 as well, were both charged with felony murder and aggravated assault over the death of Faith Burns, who was 20 years old, and she was shot and killed near a home in Dakula, Georgia. Now, I ain't never heard of Dakula. I've heard of Decatur, but Dakula, Georgia, on Valentine's Day. Two 16-year-old girls whose name are not being released, also who hail from Snellville, Georgia, were also arrested in connection with Burns' death. So I guess in Georgia, 17 is the age of consent, or I believe 16 is the age of consent. So 17 years old, you're perfectly legal for them to put your, your face or your identity in the papers. I don't know, but they sure as hell did put these two 17-year-olds' identity in the public space but they did not put the two 16 year olds in there as well i don't know if information has led them to believe that the two 16 year olds might not be that much involved they were more or less bystanders but these two that they have published their pictures were actually the persons who did the killing i have no clue so collins and spencer are both residents of Long longenville georgia which is about 15 minutes away a fifth suspect who is called Damia Mitchell, she is 17 years old as well. Damia actually turned herself into the police two days after the slayings, after being the original person of interest in the puzzling and alleged five-person homicide. So it's believed that five persons ganged up on one person, beat her, and then someone shot her, and she died. No one wants to say who it was, so everyone who is suspected of being a part of the beating slash shooting will be charged with the crime. This is what it looks like at the moment. I'm thinking that Damia actually went and told on everybody else, and that is how everybody else got picked up after, since she was the original person that the person of interest in this whole puzzling thing. Now, Mitchell was charged at the time with felony murder. That's Damia Mitchell. Aggravated assault and possession of a firearm by a minor. And this is according to the Gwinnett Daily Post. Jail records indicate that she has subsequently been charged with four counts of participating in a criminal gang. More information needs to come out because I want to know what this has to do with the gang were they a part of a gang is this a female gang or is this an extension of some gang like you know you have blood but you got blood females and blood males you got crips you got crip females and crip males that type of stuff there are different hierarchy in the gang world so you have girls that are jumped in which means you take a beating and you are in or versus girls that are sexed in the girls that are sexed in of course they get way less respect because they are there, once you're sexed in, you're there for that pleasure only, at the pleasure of the gang members who want to do sexual things with you. So, the gangster girls usually get jumped in. They're the ones that are just as hardened as the men, and they pull triggers too, and they bump heads and fight as well. Now, according to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, and citing local law enforcement, the two which is the first female, which is Damia Mitchell, and the victim, they were involved in a domestic altercation. A domestic altercation. Was this a love triangle or was this a 
domestic situation between two lovers. Anyway, they were involved in a domestic altercation before the deadly rounds were fired right outside the home. Shell casings were found all the way across the street, the police said. In an update released after Mitchell was named as the prime suspect, police said investigators also believe that there were multiple people that were actually present during the shooting. So they had witnessed the shooting, but they provided very little details beyond that. Investigations are still ongoing and usually the police won't tell you everything they know until they gather all their evidence. So just know if you're involved in this situation right here that your name is probably on paper. They probably got a picture of you somewhere and they are probably gathering evidence against you right now as we speak. At the least is to drag you into court as a witness. Now, prosecutors and police have generally been largely tight-lipped about the circumstances surrounding the victim's untimely death. What specific role or roles the four other girls may have played in the final moments of Burns' life is not publicly clear as yet. So we wait to hear what this was all about. Like I said before, was this a love triangle? Was this girlfriend jealous over girlfriend? Was this best friends turn enemies? We don't know the fine print of the details. All we know is that there was an altercation and somebody ended up dead and there were others around to see it. An online obituary says that Burns was born in New York, but she moved with her family to Loganville, Georgia in 2007. And there she graduated from Crayon High School where she played soccer throughout the years she attended. She received a soccer scholarship to Gordon State College and she later transferred to Georgia State University is what the obituary states. Faith was a member of the Divine Love Church and participated in the youth ministry. She enjoyed painting, playing soccer, playing video games, hanging out with her friends and playing with her niece and nephew. Faith had a great sense of humor and was a jokester to many that were close to her. Now, this sounds like your cookie cutter, perfect, perfect teenager who grew up into a wonderful young woman, played soccer throughout her years in school. They relocated from New York, the hustles and bustles to good old country life in Georgia, to the suburbs. She played soccer. She got a soccer scholarship, full ride. She transferred from a smaller college to a state university and all this other accomplishments. She attended church, not just every once in a while. She was an active member in the church youth organization and all these things. An obituary photo shows her wearing a white shirt with a Christian cross around her neck. A GoFundMe was set up and that GoFundMe had raised $20,000 so far for her unexpected funeral. The Sunday afternoon killing caught neighbors' attention due to the sound of the gunfires. A 911 call reported that one person was shot and that led police to arrive at the home in question around 1.30 p.m. that day. There is where investigators saw Burns laying in the streets, laying out flat in the streets. Uniwati Trail at Mountain Ash Court in the unincorporated area of Dakula. A motive in the slaying has still not yet been brought forth. The original press release on Burns' death is what we are reading this from, and this was also copied over to another page, which is called Law and Crime.com, which you can go look at yourself. Now, like I said before, I don't know what happened. We live in a crazy world these days. Everything goes to violence, especially young people. It's kill or be killed kind of thing. There's no more talking it out. There's no more, okay, we don't speak anymore. Let's go our separate ways. It's my feelings are hurt and I feel like I got to hurt you physically. I don't know. I'm going to say this again. These two young females that I see in these pictures these females, Kennedy Collins and Jocelyn Spencer, they better hope they get off because they really don't look like the type that can handle 10, 15, 20 years or a life sentence inside of a maximum security female prison. 
I'm going to leave it right there for now. If you know anything about this story, leave your comments in the comment section below. In the meantime, stay tuned for the other videos that will be uploaded shortly. And I'll catch you right here again on BrainFlow TV. My condolences goes out to the family of the victim. It's always hard when you lose a loved one. It's even harder when you lose someone that was young and healthy and beautiful and intelligent and all that other stuff. Y'all know how it goes. I'm out. Peace.